Hi everyone, this is lesson four. And guess what? We are finally learning how to use our camera to measure light. This is very important and it's great because it's one of the basics for taking a picture, so it's really useful. So guys, before starting measuring light, it's important to understand how it works and what the default settings are. What you can see here, uh, what I have here is a grey card used by photographers. This card reflects 18% of the light. You may think, why is she telling us these things? Well, when we are taking a photo, the lens captures more or less light depending on the position of the camera. If I face the camera towards a bright surface, like this white table over here, it's going to capture more light. But if I face it towards a darker surface, like my black jeans, the amount of light that goes through the camera is going to be smaller. That's it. Although this room is well illuminated and we think our photos will look great with plenty of light, it may not be the case since the camera doesn't interpret the amount of light in the same way. It is. It doesn't measure the incident light, but the reflected light. Well, what's the difference? There are two ways of measuring light. One of them is by using a handheld light meter, normally used in the studio, which measures the light reaching the camera. The other is by using a camera, as we are doing, which measures the, the reflected light of the scene. This means that the color of the surface we are taking a photo of is going to modify the light. For instance, the best option to take photos of colorful scenes, for example, with contrast between shades and lights, is using a gray card calibration. However, this option is not going to work with white shades on dark scenes. Imagine we go to the mountain and want to shoot the snow, or for example, in a dark day or a cloudy day. So this won't work. Let's do a quick exercise to understand all this stuff. I'm going to take a photo of this gray card. I've set ISO to 400. I've used an open diaphragm and adjusted speed to 125. The ISO is set to 400 because although we are indoors and there's plenty of light, digital cameras always need more light. That, together with an open diaphragm to let more light to come through the camera, means that the speed we need is 125. Notice that the light meter is set to zero, so I'm going to take a picture. Use a closer zoom so that the grey takes the whole framing. Guys, make sure we are working with a manual focus. Otherwise, as you can see here, the camera won't let us shoot. What happens if we use the black card instead? Let's see. We set it again to zero and see? The speed is much lower. Now it's 40, because black reflects smaller amount of light for a longer period. And instead of a black color, is gray. Not cool, right? What about the white card? Or perhaps we can use the table, why not? Let's take a picture. In this case, the light matter moves to a higher number. Can you see it? Because white reflects much more light. Then we set it again to zero and have a look, look at the speed. One divided by four, 500, much higher, which means less light comes into the camera. Our photo is now gray and not white. So, uh, as we said, we we are going to work with the reflected light. So, in order to do so, we are going to be learning how to use the different parameters to measure the amount of light. Let's start with the ISO settings, which is the sensibility of the sensor work when capturing the light of the scene. The best option is to use the default ISO settings or the lowest values. You may see that this value depends on the camera. It can be 100, 200, or even smaller. 
It's important to take it into account, since if we set a higher ISO value, we are actually forcing the sensor to work with a smaller amount of light. So, don't worry if you get a bit lost, because I'm sure you understand it much better with a practical exercise. So, ISO causes a visual effect called noise, which I'm pretty sure you, you've heard about it before. The noise takes place when we cannot appreciate the details in the photo as a result of expanding ISO. What happens here is that the camera feels that we are forcing it, and thus, pictures are less clear and we lose color's continuity. How to adjust ISO sensibility? Just go to the menu. There, we are going to find different values, which will depend on the camera we are using. Also, some cameras let us increase ISO values. Sometimes, after the highest value, there is an H or any other sign which lets us increase the value, and that isn't specified with numbers. With this increase, we'll be forcing even more the sensibility, and although we are going to work with less light, perhaps it's not that great to find this annoying noise in the photo, right? In case you cannot find the ISO expansion option in in your camera, try to go to custom functions or functions inside the menu or in the user manual. Once the ISO is set, let's talk about the aperture and speed options. The aperture or diaphragm is going to affect the amount of light coming into the sensor. We can see how it works here. Open, close, open, close. But we are going to find out in details afterwards. It's really important to be aware of the visual effects we are going to get with each parameter. In the case of the aperture, it has to do with soft focus and depth of field, which is decisive when focusing attention to a determined object in the scene. Another parameter we can find is shutter time, which is the time we take to shoot. OK, I'll take this off, and then we are going to set a lower speed. Let's say, for example, two and a half seconds. See how the mirror lifts up and the shutter closes down, because we've let the light go inside for a long time. Now let's set a higher speed. Pay attention to the noise. By doing this, we are controlling the exposure time and also the movement, which we are going to work with in another lesson. These options are also cool to work with different options regarding movement, so we can decide if we want a static photo or a dynamic one. But that's up to us to decide which one to choose. So now that we've been introduced these three parameters, we're ready to start learning how to measure light. Let's turn on your camera, please. We're going to find here the exposure meter. This is the key when adjusting the parameters. The exposure meter measures the amount of light getting into the camera and is going to tell us if it's OK or, on the contrary, if there's too much light, moving to the right or not enough light to the left. Guys, this is very important and we need to adjust it constantly so that we are able to find stability between the existing light of the scene and the position of the camera. Because we are working with reflected light. So, regarding my position, this light is going to change. So, keep an eye on this, pay attention to this and to this black point. How are we going to get this black point? Press the release button and it's going to appear on the screen. 
Now, for example, I'm going to reduce it and set the value to zero. Right. OK, guys, it's also important that you keep in mind the following. Because if we don't touch the camera for a long period of time or a short period of time, it goes into a standby mode and the exposure matter till disappears. So I just need to press again and release the release button and it will appear on your screen straight away. But doing this, we are reminding the camera, hey, it's time to go back to work. By default, the camera measures all the light of the scene. This, as we are going to be learning later on, can be interpreted in a different way. It's important to take into account that when taking a picture, we are going to work with a specific amount of light, which we'll be able to, ch to adjust using the exposure values. In this sense, we can add light, which means that we are doubling the amount of light, or we just can half it. So we are going to move right or left, depending if we are adding light or reducing it. So for now, we'll be using zero. The only problem is that as the camera is already set to gray and we are going to find the scenes with different colors and contrasts between shades and lights, we'll need to change the value. Let's say we move the exposure matter to the right. We are talking about overexposition. It is the more light than necessary. If we move it towards the left side, we refer to underexposure, which means that the photo will darken. So, if when taking a photo, the matter moves to the main sign, we are going to get a dark image with some shades alteration. So, don't forget, use zero as a start point. But we are going to see that this will change in the practice. The golden tip is to alternate these three parameters depending on the effect we want to get. We can use one or the other depending on what we want. Let's say that we want a static image. Then we'll be focusing on the speed. Or for instance, if we are in the mood for a slow focus, then we'll be giving priority to the aperture. The good news is that we'll be able to control all these options at the end of the course. When taking a photo, most of us seem more worried about the camera and using properly the parameters than that we forget the scene we are taking a picture of. And this is a big mistake. From now on, we must pay a great deal of attention to the scene lighting. So, in order to make the most of our photos, we just need to consider aspects such as the direction of the light, contrasts, etc. Let's see how all this stuff works in a real situation. First of all, remember that the zero in the exposure matter is just a guide. So, depending if the result is darker or brighter, we are going to adjust it to overexposure or underexposure. I'm going to take a picture with ISO set at 100 and F8. Then the same picture with one more point of light, it is plus one. And then another with one less, it is minus one. Later, we'll be evaluating the results in terms of light exposure. Don't forget, it's crucial to take into account that contracts are decisive for the results. In this case, I have a tree with a, which is darker than the bright sky, so I need to change the camera settings. So, to sum up, feel free to adjust the light in terms of improving the light of your photo. And remember that a camera doesn't capture the light as our eyes do. So that's why it's really important to understand the lighting measurement. Why don't we check what happens with a real lead? 
let's take an object and put it in before the sun or a bright light. We are going to take different photos with different values, 0, plus 1, and minus 1. Are you able to keep the light of the scene? So, what have we learned in this lesson? That the exposure matter is just a guide and will be changing the values depending on the photos we are taking, our position, the object's position, and what we are focusing on. So guys, see you in the next lesson.